Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip 45 Drives. So uh, this week I'm talking about the state of copyright, copy on right file systems in RHEL Linux or CentOS Linux, our favorite operating system. All right, so the reason this topic's coming up right now, um, over the last few months, we've been making the transition uh, of all the, the underpinning works of transitioning from CentOS 7 to CentOS 8, making sure all our scripts, our playbooks, that we are ready to use all the new fun features that are added to CentOS 8, and that we're aware of all the features that have been removed. Um, so there's, there's a lot of changes, a lot of new stuff, a lot, of, a lot of old stuff gone, but one of the ones I found really interesting were was the complete omission of ButterFS or BTRFS or BTreeFS, however you want to say it, uh, which was kind of the, the copy on write file system for Linux. That is, it's dead. It, as far as RHEL and CentOS is concerned, there are other distributions that still do that. RHEL and CentOS are not shipping it. They're not supporting it. They don't want anything to do with it anymore. Um, this ButterFS was always the kind of counterpoint to ZFS, the other kind of de facto, our favorite copy on write file system. Uh, but for a bunch of reasons I'm not going to get into right now, ZFS isn't natively in the Linux kernel right now. So what are we doing? If there's no copy on write file system included in the new modern, most modern operating system with RHEL and CentOS, what does that mean? Well, they kind of met in the middle there. You can still, sh you can still run ZFS on it, but like, XFS. XFS, the traditional way that we store mass amounts of data on Linux, uh, sorry, RHEL operating systems, RHEL family operating systems, um, was really just a journal file system. Stable, awesome, could repair it. Everyone loves XFS. It just missed some cool copy on write features like snapshots and, and, and uh, dedupe and all kinds of cool stuff that comes with copy on write. Well, with the omission of ButterFS, they have upgraded XFS, and they've added some copy on write ish file systems. I say ish because it's not a full rewrite of that file system. They just kind of put in some new features that kind of help bridge that gap now that ButterFS is gone. Um, so I'll spare a bunch of the details right here because we're going to hop over to my desk. I'm going to go through a demo of how that, how you make that file system, how it's easy, and just a little demo of like what that really means, like how I can show you that we're saving some space and then I can take some snapshots. So We'll go over to there and then, um, yeah, you know what? Let's just get into it. I'll save all the fun, gory stuff for then. Okay, so I'm here to do a demo showcasing one of the coolest new features in the XFS file system. But before we do that, let's just rewind a little bit and take a look at uh, ButterFS. Of course, ButterFS is, is, is dead in RHEL and CentOS now, but this new feature got its, its start in ButterFS. So for the, long, for the longest time now, and still, if you still use ButterFS, but not in CentOS or RHEL, has had a useful feature called reflinks. So basically, this is um, an option that you can copy a file, expose it with like the cp command dash dash reflinks equals always, and it will take advantage of the extents and copy on write of the ButterFS file system. It will do a quick copy of the data by just making another reference to it somewhere else in the file system. It doesn't have to read all the data back out and then write it all back down again, uh, as would be the case in other file systems. Um, this sounds very familiar to what people might recognize as a hard link, but it is not the same, as in hard links have got some unfortunate kind of drawbacks, like there's only one I know that represents the whole thing, so you can't have different owners group. Either way, this is a feature, reflinks, that was introduced in ButterFS, but since ButterFS kind of wasn't really going anywhere, what's this got to do with XFS? Well, that same kind of feature that they built into ButterFS that kind of pulled it out and just included it in the VFS layer of the kernel instead of just a ButterFS file system. So the good news is that XFS can now take um, advantage of the same reflink thing. So you can um, write another file without actually writing another file. So you can have very fast copies. So with that kind of ramble out of the way, um, preamble, pre-ramble, <laughs> Uh, let's get into the demo. To stay on brand, let's uh, let's create an RBD device. I'll map that. So I'll go RBD, pool type, replicated. Um, 
Uh, I want to use RBD. I'll go replica two just for faster writes. I want to make a new rule. I'm just going to call it rep SSD. Uh, that's fine. I want it on the SSDs. I'm replicating host, create my crush rule. Okay, create the pool. Just rushing through this because that's not what we're here for. So let's take a look at XFS demo. That's the, what we'll name the disk. Uh, 50 gigs, and that's all ready to go. Let's create the pool, or create the image. So that should be nice and fast it's on an SSD. So let me pop over my terminal here. I'm just going to mount this on one of my monitors. RBD map. XFS underscore demo. There we go. Now let's go make a fest dot XFS. Um, we're going to make this uh, make the reflink file system on it. So you go dash m reflink equals one, and then the device you want to create it on. So in this case, we're going to use this Rados block device. Okay, and then you can tell during the info we've got CRC equals one, and reflink equals one, and we're done. So let's just mount this device to. Mount, what did I call it? XFS demo. Um, no, I want a new directory. I think I still have things mounted there. Make dir mount XFS. We're going to go mount dev rbd0 mount XFS. Okay, clear. Just clear that clutter off. Do a dash H, and you can see down here I mounted 54 gigabytes on my mount XFS. So let's clear that again. Now let's put some data on this. Whatever, it's just a regular looking file system right now. So um, let's create three one gig files. I'm just going to cut and copy this command in. So four I and one to three echo right right from you random to my file path one meg. 10, 24 times, I'll end up with three 1 gig files. So we'll just let this finish. Okay, so you can see out of my small Ceph test cluster here, um, we, we were writing files at about 100 meg 150 megabytes a second. Perfect. But you might be wondering, when are you going to get to the fun stuff? So uh, let's, let's copy one of these commands. So let's do a time copy, just regular... E I'm going to say mount, not FFS, we want XFS. XFS, um, curly, copy, curly, one. So this is just going to, this is going to copy one of the files i just written back out again. Oh. I have to put a slash here because my syntax was incorrect. There we go. So be verbose, it's copying one over to copy one. So that took about three seconds. Cool. Um, let's take a look at the uh, usage, right? Because now I should have four files. So I should see, yeah, so I have 4.4 .4 gigs used. DU sees four gigabytes. The difference is the difference between Tebbies and Ter, or gig, Gebbies and gig, Giga. Anyway, don't worry about that. We got four gigs, right? We wrote three originally. We just copied another one. Therefore, I have four gigs used. But again, you still might be wondering, when are you going to get to the fun stuff? So, let's do that copy command again. I'm just going to make my screen a little bigger so we can see everything. And we're going to time it again. We're going to copy dash V for verbose. Dash dash ref link equals always. So, copy this time referencing these ref links. Mount XFS slash. But this time, we're going to comma ref link underscore curly one. So, uh, we're going to copy the file again, but we're going to reflink copy it this time. So let's see how long it takes. Instant. Instant. You might have thought it just broke, but nope, that's real. We just went from 3 seconds to 0 0.03 seconds. Because remember what I said, it's not actually reading and then rewriting the data. It's just writing another reference to it. So for the real magic on that, let's take a look at the usage. 
So this time, if you look at du, so I'm running two commands at once. Right? I'm running df, so what um, what is actually physically used block-wise, and then the apparent usage. So du is the apparent, df is the actual usage. So in above, what you saw there was the apparent and actual usage were bang on. And this time, I have five files here now. So the apparent usage is five gigabytes. Okay, perfect. Applications will be happy, users are happy, everyone's happy. But let's look at the actual use capacity on disk. It is now 4.4 gigabytes because it didn't actually rewrite that file again. And this is what uh, XFS is doing when you copy using this ref link always. So um, that's pretty much the end of this demo here. A great way to show that you can quickly move files. Um, now the magic from this, you might be wondering, what do I do with this? How do I get, how do I use this? How is that useful to me? Well, it depends on your applications and they can move files. Anyway, long story short, Veeam backups. Uh, using their fast copy utility, uh, utilizes this exactly and can have some lightning fast incremental backups. And uh, I'll, um, my colleague Mitch will get into that on another tech tip because uh, he'll walk you through the actual demo on that. But that's kind of the overview of RefLinks. Uh, ButterFS is now dead in RHEL and CentOS, but some of its nicer features made its way in the Linux kernel, so we're still, we're, uh, the ghosts of ButterFS pass are still with us. Okay, so there it is. There's a quick rundown on the uh, new copy on write ish features in XFS. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Any questions, leave it below. And stay tuned for next week where we dive into some of the real applications that you can use this new feature. Thanks for watching, everyone.